thank you all for joining today to go through some of the new aspects of the Cochrane Ride peer review policy. Um, the policy has been published today, so it's, it's very new and it's very timely that we have some time set aside to go through it today. Um, I'm Bryony Urquhart. Um, I work in the Editorial and Methods Department, which is a central uh, department within the Cochrane unit. Um, I was hoping that we'd be joined today also by Sally Belsire, who has been instrumental in writing a lot of the implementation guidelines for the peer review policy. And um, we'll be running the webinar again in May with one of our colleagues, uh, Liz Dooley, who's also been very helpful in, in pulling together a lot of the work. Um, if I just move to giving you a, a webinar outline, so what we're hoping to cover today is a brief introduction to the policy, and then we'll move on to talk about the policy highlights. So there really are four main take home messages from the, the webinar today. And after the webinar, you'll be able to go to the website and read the policy and the guidance in, in full length and in full detail. But we did want to cover some practical implementation today. Now that's where we might struggle if we can't get Sally on the line, but, um, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to do so before then. And if not, maybe someone on the line will be able to help us out with that. Um, I think only Bashar has joined us too, uh, who's a third member of the um, ME support team. Um, and then we'll, I should have plenty of time for questions and uh, additional resources. So I should, should probably say that the practical implementation piece of the webinar is focused very much on implementation if you are currently using um, Archie workflows to manage the peer review process. So there may be some questions around how to get to that point and, and we can cover those as well. So this is the EPPR. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to point it out. This is our editorial and publishing policy resource specifically written for Cochrane. It's uh, available from the community Cochrane page and the web address is there. Uh, this is where we publish all of our policies and policies aren't static, they're updated from time to time. So it's a good idea to keep your eye on this page and particularly um, the sections in development. Uh, the peer review policy will appear for just so that you can navigate to it. Um, on the left hand side, you can see the table of co contents. The peer review policy you'll find under Cochrane Review Management, and there are a couple of pages there dealing with peer review. What we're trying to do now is separate the policy from the guidance for implementation of the policy. So the policy is very brief and specific. It's written for an internal and external audience, giving you information about. Um, exactly what our policies are and then the guidance part of the document is very much suggestions for how to implement it. So the policy is mandatory and the guidance is a supplement to that. So it's not mandatory, there are ideas, it's, it's best practice really I suppose for Cochrane to follow but it's not, if you have similar processes we're not expecting you to change them so that you're following the guidance to the letter. But on the other hand if you'd like to know how to do something that's where you'll find the information. So the peer review policy itself has three main aims. The first is transparency in decision making. It's very much an ethos of Cochrane that we're a transparent organisation and that's transparency within and also external uh, to the main Cochrane community. We also wanted to standardise the peer review processes that are currently in use across Cochrane. And with many things, I'm sure you're, you're realising this now, maybe you're realising even more as we work together within networks, that until now there were over 50 different ways to run a peer review process within Cochrane. And we we're going to use this as well. The third point is to implement best practice. Um, so the key points to take away from the new policy is firstly that we are able to state categorically that all Cochrane reviews and protocols of Cochrane reviews are peer reviewed. And the four key things to take away beneath that are we are moving to a named peer review policy, which is sometimes called an open identity peer review. Uh, it's where the peer reviewers and the authors know each other's names and affiliations during the process of peer review. Now we use the term named peer review within the documentation within Cochrane and it's uh, the open identity term is one that's been coined more recently in the community. So you might see both being referred to external to Cochrane, but if you're looking within the policy, we, we call it named peer review. We have also included in the policy some guidance on when to peer review updated reviews and updated protocols so that there's um, 
defined guidelines on when uh, peer review must take place. Uh, we'll come on and, and talk about it a bit more, but there are some instances where um, selective peer review is appropriate. And when it comes to updated reviews and updated protocols, there are times when they're so similar to the original that external peer review is not required. There's also a stipulation for the minimum and type of peer review is required. Um, and there's also some stipulations on how to acknowledge peer reviewers. I'm sure you can imagine that peer reviewing a Cochrane review is, is not really comparable to peer reviewing a journal article. It's a significant investment of time and expertise for our peer reviewers. So um, trying to give them some additional credit for, for that process. Now, as I've said, we know that there are over 50 ways that Cochrane groups currently run their peer review processes. And we know that this change is going to be significant for some groups. So in order to assess the impact on CRGs, we did do a, a short survey of managing editors in March of this year, from which we had 51 responses, which is nearly every single review group within Cochrane at the moment. And we asked them two questions. We asked, firstly, how often do you use named peer review? And secondly, do you acknowledge your peer reviewers? Um, so for the first question, we were pleased to see that almost 30 review groups, so more than more than half, um, always or frequently use a named peer review process at the moment. So we know there are many, many groups out there who are, who are following a named peer review process successfully. But we also are then aware that we have 14 groups who have never run a named peer review process and are going to need some extra support to implement that over the next few months. And again, we had a similar distribution. So there was more than one response per CRG for the second question on do you acknowledge your peer reviewers? And most groups do in the acknowledgement section of the review and some do on the CRG website. So obviously that there is a bit of a change gap there that we'll need to support and manage. And with this in mind, we have suggested that we run um, a phased implementation of the peer review policy. So we've worked extensively with the ME support team to put together guidance on implementation, which is available from the EPPR website. Uh, we've published the policy and the guidance documentation in the EPPR uh, today. So the webinar today will also be mirrored in Australia on the 10th of May. If you have any colleagues who would like to join, do um, let them know about that. And from May onwards, really, we'll be working to identify the CRGs that are going to require additional support. So we're hoping that following the webinars, you'll feel very free to come and talk to us about any questions you have about implementation. And we can work with you on making sure that we have a plan in place. But from June onwards, we'll be reaching out to the CRGs that we haven't heard from and really trying to make sure that everyone uh, understands the peer review policy and is able to implement it. We have submitted a couple of workshops for the Edinburgh Colloquium, but whether they'll go ahead or not is, uh, we should hear the end of this month whether our abstracts have been accepted. But as a pre-colloquium workshop, we are going to be working with the ME group to put together a programme of activities specific to MEs, and the peer review policy and implementation will uh, form a component of that. But our aim is that by January 2019, uh, all CRGs will comply fully with the policy, and that's what we're working towards. <laughs>